Hi guys, I'm really sorry if there's a weird noise in this, but my rabbit has chosen this precise time to eat a box, so there's a little bit of chomping going on, but that's okay, we can, we can carry on. So I just wanted to do a little plant haul, I've just got a couple of new plants that I wanted to show you. The first one is this absolutely gorgeous lemon lime maranta. It's fine. I had one of these before and unfortunately you got thrips. These are not very resilient when it comes to pests. Some plants are and some plants aren't and interestingly, don't worry about those Holly, it's fine. Tenanthi are really really resilient when it comes to pests. They can live with pests and show almost no signs that they're in any kind of distress and they just like pass them on to all the other plants but Maranta for some reason no really not a fan. So yeah, she's just absolutely stunning and this was $8.99. I think I said last time I bought one, these things have just gone down so far in price and it's just so good. She's got a few nice little marks on the leaves there. That's okay. You can get them off with like lemon juice and stuff but often putting acid on leaves, it's not necessarily the best so I don't tend to do it. I'm not really that bothered. And the next thing, this has been on my wish list for so long. I love rubber plants and this is a variegated one. The like moonshine one with the like speckled, I don't know if you can see that, variegation. I don't know if there's something wrong with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but it's really like curly. I, I don't know if that, if it's just because it's a small one or because it's feeling a little bit stunted. There's also a bonus, looks like a carrot in the bottom. And there's not like a lot of root system there, so this is probably going to stay in here until it like busts out. I'm really sorry if you fall over, but you're like balanced on my sofa. And I've also got myself another Monstera. Look at the roots. I love Monstera roots so much. And you might be like, that's ready for a repot, but I actually think it's fine. Monstera roots tend to like circle around the bottom and there's all this like free space for roots. So she's okay. And you might be like, why the hell do you need another Monstera? You have, well, I mean, there's two in this room alone. And then I've got one upstairs. What I want to do with this one is keep it like in this really bright self-facing window. And I just want to see how long it takes for it to get fenestrations. Just a bit of an experiment so I can kind of tell people. I want to say it'll get fenestrations by the end of this like growing season, but we'll just have to see. This is the Monstera Peru that I hauled in my last video. It is growing so fast. It's several cuttings in one pot and it's got one, two, three, four leaves growing at once. It's just so nice. I really like the aerial roots. They're really like, I don't know, aerial rooting. There's one just there. Still no closer to finding out what this actually is. Oh, the sun, now the sun's gone in. Now I've spent all morning like trying to work out where's best to sit and the sun goes in. It's fine. So last time I hauled a lot of the little tiny teeny plants and I've repotted some of them. Some have grown, some haven't. This ficus hasn't, I've got nothing. This leaf is deteriorating. We have got a growth point, like the same one that it had before, but not really a lot's happened. I probably repotted it a bit too early. These pots are, they're not like the, a great size to go up from the baby ones, but because they've got a lot of holes like around the edge, they do dry out quite quickly, so they're actually a pretty decent option. The Gloriosum was in the middle of growing a new leaf and it's just popped out. The white veining doesn't seem very like prominent on the younger ones. They, As they get older, I'm guessing, unless I've just got like a dud, it must just develop as they get older. But this leaf is like significantly bigger than the leaf before it, so we're doing okay. Awesome. We've also got a new leaf on the varicosum. I love varicosum leaves. They are just so pretty. And it's also, this is the first leaf where it started getting the like hairy petiole. If you look at the last one, it's not hairy against my face. And this one is. So that's exciting. And then they've all also got new leaves coming straight through. I think it's just the light in here is so good for them. Like this is south facing and it's direct light, like the sun shines through the window and the curtains are usually open but I don't think it's that intense because 
that it must just be the angle that it's at like a west facing window is more direct i think just because the sun's lower when it hits it when the sun's coming through the south facing window it's higher in the sky so it's slightly further away i usually have a refidifera refidifera refidifora tetrasperma up there and i noticed that the stem was like yellowing and I'm like, that's quite interesting because the plant seemed fine and yeah i didn't want to bug it because it is a really picky plant like my specific one in general they're not picky but mine was and i was repotting the other day and i went to like touch it i think i was getting it down a different plant and it literally just snapped and i was like oh okay odd I, like root rot isn't something that i deal with because i don't water my plants enough and when i looked at the roots the roots were all like perfectly white and healthy it was fine and i'm like what I don't know what happened. I can only think that the stem like was laid on the soil and that rotted. And look at my spider plant. It's actually like growing. This isn't something my spider and look at the roots. It looks like mould, but they are roots. Like they're they're already coming out of the bottom. Turns out that the secret is just not neglecting them for months at a time. Uh, before the well it wasn't really before when i realized that the refidifora was like separate from the stem the, the roots were completely separated because the stem was rotten i took a load of cuttings and they're all there i have to keep my cuttings like where i sit like obviously this is my living room and if i don't i just never change the water so i have to have them like where i am otherwise it's just they just get completely forgotten about but I was doing like a few different things with the cuttings just to see if I could get them to root faster. So a couple of months ago, I took a load of Philodendron Brazil cuttings and I propagated them all in like 10 different mediums. And weirdly, the one that was the fastest by miles was nutrient water. I used the um, General Hydroponics Flora series and it rooted really quickly. Not quite as quickly as Super Thrive. Super Thrive, I think it... Was Super Thrive second? Super Thrive seemed like it was doing something and then was like, no, I'm not. Like the end, there was like a little nub by the node, but that was it. And then it's still not really doing much now. And then the nutrient water just started to grow. And I was like, interesting, because that's not a tip you normally see. I just wanted to see what it would do. But then I also did one with the Refidifora where I changed the frequency of the change in the water. And the one that I changed the water of every day rooted in like five days it was crazy it's this one which one this one so i took this cutting two weeks ago and you might be thinking i can get them to root way quicker than that that's gooey fine but they do not root for me at all this is like amazing and then i was also wondering if it rooted faster because it was a top cutting but actually, from what I've read and what I can gather, a top cutting is, isn't any more likely to root faster than a mid cutting, but it is more likely to put out growth faster because it's already got an axillary bud activated. If it doesn't have an axillary bud, then it has to like either activate it or like basically grow one, whereas this is just ready to go. But I don't think it should make a difference. So I'm pretty sure changing the water every day will make a plant root faster. The other ones, which I was changing like various amounts haven't done anything and whilst i do think it's interesting that the plants roots faster if you change the water a lot what i really wanted to find out was that i didn't need to change it at all and it would root fine but that is not happening what was also interesting about rooting plants faster this is obviously for a given meaning of the word interesting i find it interesting the faster you get plants to root, the more likely they are to grow no <laughs> the faster plants are to root, the more likely they are to produce new roots from the aerial root. And this doesn't always happen. It's from the philodendron Brazil thing experiment. Uh, it's very hit and miss. Basically the ones that root fastest within a week, they all just it all just comes from directly from the aerial root. I'll show you one the other one. See that? That is popped out of the end of an aerial root. It's not come from the node. This isn't... At first I was like, oh, that, that's like, it's, it's interesting, but nothing more. However, some of the cuttings rooted from the node, but they rooted slower. However, the ones that rooted from the node put out new growth faster. 
I don't know if it's just chance because I've not these are not particularly scientific I've tried my best to get like similar size cuttings but obviously it's not impossible to get cuttings that are all the same oh and I forgot about the final experiment that I did was it final it wasn't it was the second one but it doesn't matter if you've been propagating plants for a while you've probably heard that a good way to speed up the process is to put a pothos cutting in with your plant like in with the cutting and I always kind of it's one of those things you tend to read on more like old-fashioned type websites or more generic ones but I thought you know what try it oh it works now I will need to repeat this because I almost feel like it worked a bit too well but this was the it was a cutting for Nerifidophora so it was done at the same time as the other ones and I was changing the water weekly I think it has the longest root but as you can as you can probably as you've probably gathered it's got a really long aerial root now I don't know whether the length of the aerial root impacts how quick that would have to be a separate experiment like I am writing all these up it's like it's like science at school I am writing them all up I need to come up with like you know when you're like methodology theory that kind of thing i need to write them all up like that I, I don't know if it makes a difference but i mean that is a hell of a route but the um we can rule out it being anything to do with the water because the the actual pothos that i put in this is my it's a i cut it off because it's it's not diseased i think it's just malnourished and nothing I can kind of see the end of, you, you won't be able to see, but the end of the aerial root is starting to split as if growth's going to come out of it. But this has been in there for two or three weeks and this is just, he helped, but he's not helped himself. I've somehow ended up with five Rifidophora tetrasperma cuttings. This is the one from the terrarium that this was the growth point and it burned, it Rifidophora grow into the grow lights. Plants grow towards light, we know this, but there's a ton of plants in there and it is the only one that actually tries to get into the lights. So then it just burns and snaps off. Um, I don't really know what to say about this. This is the new growth. It has not got a root. This white thing is the um, axillary bud. So that's where... If that was activated new growth will come from there this is an aerial root i think it's dead I'm, I'm not topping it off because that just seems silly but it's all dried out at the top uh this is it it's snapped and it's not in the water so i don't i'm guessing it must be using this otherwise why this is this leaf is growing perfectly happily but this doesn't look like a decent root. It's, I don't know. It, and it's it's not green because it's alive. It's green because it's covered in algae. So yeah. So that is it for my plant haul like information dump for this time. I'm gonna now whiz you around the terrarium. If anybody knows how to film a terrarium, I can't get in it because if I get in it, obviously I can't fit in it, but I can't get my arms in it because the gecko, because the geckos will get out. But it's always like fogged up. I mean, I could just, I, I could obviously just dry it off, but I'm really not that bothered about it. So we'll start off at the drier side that's easier to see. This is my Pothos Marble Queen. She is looking magnificent. There I am in the heat lamp. There'll be a gecko up there. Yeah, there's a gecko up there. She is just amazing. Uh, if you want to grow pothos really big, then definitely try in a terrarium. But I, th I think if I wanted to get fenestrations, she'd need to grow up. This Calathea Velvet Touch needs trimming back all the time. She's obviously too big to go in there. That is the Rifidophora that climbs into the light. That is the world's creepiest aerial route. Has it reached the ground yet? Nearly. 
you can see it just touching that um, ugly anemia. The ugly anemia, even if you get the ones with a lot of green on them, they do tend to end up pink. Like the ones that are pink, there's one there that's green. There is a bird's nest fern in there. That's another calathea, another pink ugly anemia. That is a philodendron brazil cutting. Grows like a weed in there. And there's also this begonia, the one with all the white flowers on it. That thing really grows like a weed. We have to chop that a lot. There is also a... I can't remember if that's a micans or just a regular... That's the micans because it's wet. The fog has just been on. It looks like a regular heart leaf philodendron. The regular one is in front of it. That is the heart leaf. That is the micans. And down here somewhere, we've got a Monstera adansonia that you can't really see. It's this thing here. Can we go this side? It's that. You can't see it. I don't know why I'm forcing you. So that is everything that is new with me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.